no music, no intro. Another hashtag Saints Twitter podcast episode. Um, we're we're pumping them out. Uh, joined as always with Ryan. You can follow Ryan on Twitter at that boy Wolf. We actually got a. I think we're. This is is this considered big time? Like someone from the NFL Network decided to grace us with, yeah. his, with, with his appearance on on the pod. Uh, NFL Networks, NFL.com's one and only Greg Rosenthal. You can follow Greg on Twitter at Greg Rosenthal. He is a part of the wildly popular around the NFL uh, podcast. Um, he does another podcast with his best friend. He doesn't even qualify to get like a stimulus check. Like that's how good it is to be Greg. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you should be treat you should be treating it as a big time guest. You got to start, you know, making those big time moves. We got to up the production game here. You got to let me know more than two minutes before the show that I got to be on Zoom. It's like. Uh, <laughs> It's like, what is this, like my, my preschool class with my son? Like, I'm walking around my neighborhood right now. Uh, Brig just trashing up, I guess. It'd be too loud. It'd be too loud in my house right now. They're going to bed. Kids are going to bed. It's 8.30. What, that's too late? You're, now you're judging? No, I'm just kidding. My daughter goes to bed at the same time. I can't even say anything. <laughs> it's, uh, it's new rules. You know, it's new rules in the pandemic. For real. Uh, I'd rather, you know, stay up a little later, sleep a little later. We don't have, you know, they don't have to go anywhere in the morning. That's one. It's probably the best single thing about about all of this is that you don't have to rush out of your house first thing in the morning. It's 8.30 later for you? <laughs> for the kids? It's a little later because I got, I got like a, you know, a five-year-old uh, son and, you know, my, my wife keeps it pretty, pretty locked down, pretty, you know, set up. So we're we're a day away from the NFL draft. We're we're gonna hit some some NFL things, but we 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 brought you on the podcast because Ryan and I feel sometimes that as Saints fans, sometimes you don't want to hear about Saints things. We're gonna talk about the Saints, but as fans of the NFL, we have to get like a broader sense of view of the league and where the NFC NFC South stands. Draft off season. Um, so I'll kind of start it off in terms of with all the craziness that's happened within the NFC, the Bucks, Brady, Gronk, Bridgewater, Carolina, uh, Falcons, or whatever. But like, how do you, as the before the draft tomorrow, where do you see the NFC right now in terms of a of a division? The NFC South or the whole conference? The NFC South. I mean, I I think the Saints have the best roster in the NFC and they're the team that you know if I'm making like kind of the list of like teams I'd be surprised if they didn't make the playoffs which is sort of how I value it you know they would they would probably be atop that list for the NFC so like you have to start there with the division the Panthers the Falcons the Bucks are you know, on paper, a lot better. I think their defense is the reason why I believe in them a little bit more. They finally have some people in the secondary and, and up front, and I like what Todd Bowles did. So they're they're frisky, and I, I think either of the other two teams could be frisky. It's probably, uh, along with the NFC West, I think the best division in football. But, man, the Saints, Sean, Payton, Sean Payton's feeling so good, he doesn't even need to do an off-season program. That's how good he's feeling about it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, I, you know, I, I look at the Saints roster and I feel pretty good about it. You know, obviously I could pick it apart. You know, Pete, Andrews, Pete, or you know, linebacker <laughs> position, or you know, things like that. But that's that's just a fan's take. But when you look at it from a global view, it's a pretty good roster. But I mean, with the Bucks, I mean, you're 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 a Patriots fan. You know, you're mm -hmm. well known. And you know Brady well. You know Gronk well. You know that connection. I mean, realistically, if it works out, let's just say it works out. What does that look like for the Bucks? Like, what does it working look like? Mm. Is it a Super Bowl? Is it what? I don't think you can rule them out. And, you know, when I say that about the Saints, like, I'm understanding that following this, following the NFL, like, the hardest thing to do is stay good year after year, is to, to kind of make the playoffs or make the – 
final eight teams year after year. And it almost never surprises me if any team doesn't do that, you know, because it just, other than the Patriots for the most part, and you know, it just doesn't happen that the, the Saints the last three years are as consistent as anyone. So, yeah, I think they'll be in the mix. But if you told me the Bucks that it did break right because Bowles and that defense are highly competitive, top 10 type of defense, which I could totally see, and that Brady's making good decisions with, you know, a, a great cast of characters around him and, and winning some lower scoring games too, in addition to also being able to score. Like, they, they are absolutely a contender. But you could say that about, like, eight or nine teams. I really don't see – and I think last year played out that way. That, that halfway through the season, you could see a ton of teams being in the mix. And, and that's just how it goes. And I, I think the Bucks would have a chance. Why not? <laughs> oh, great. Are you, I, are you surfing right now? I'm walking around. Why? What's going on? Am I like, <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're fine. Um, so what, what are your thoughts on, I mean, the Saints and – add a lot in terms of during the offseason, but the big kind of piece that they did add to complement Michael Thomas was adding Emmanuel Sanders. Um, from the outside perspective, like what were your thoughts on, on them adding help in terms of additional wide receiver weapons for, for Drew Brees in the offense? Yeah, I thought that was a great move. And I wouldn't be shocked if they got another in the draft. I mean, what do you guys think? I I, I – could see them going in a lot of directions I could I could see them being the team that takes Jordan Love which would probably annoy Saints fan but sitting at 24 like I could see adding another receiver to that group because they really don't have anything else that's screaming and, and that's where the the value might be at that point in the draft yeah I mean I think I mean wide receiver is definitely from what we're hearing wide receiver is you know it's it's one of the key positions that they'll be looking at at 24 and um and uh, Jordan Love is a real thing it's not you know it's not smoke it's like <laughs> like if he's there there will be a decision to make and you all know the whole Patrick Patrick Mahomes thing from mm -hmm. a few years ago you know will will Sean Payton look at that and like can did, will I pass this up again you know I think he'd make the move if if I'm pretty mm -hmm. much 90% sure if Jordan Love is there he's pulling mm -hmm. the trigger on it you know That'd be fun. Not, I don't know. It's scary, but it's he's fun. He's not Patrick Mahomes, though. He's not Patrick no. Mahomes. He's fun, no. and, and, I, and I just watched him this week, and he's a lot of fun. In some ways, he's even – he is just a freak, and I could see why a, a guy like Sean Payton could think that he could make him into a superstar. And who knows? He might be right. But Love has a lot more red flags in terms of oh, just yeah. make, making bad decisions. And he, he seems like that boomer bus guy that, that guys take with late first or second. And it usually doesn't work, but it, I, can, yeah. I can totally get why a team would do it because he's, he's wild to watch. Well, I know the draft isn't your expertise. You're, you're no Mark Sussler, but. <laughs> I'm into it this year. I think I'm more into it. I was just talking about this with my wife, not to cut you off. I'm sorry, Adam, but she said you're more into the draft this year than like any time I can remember. I think it's because there hasn't been any sports. So yeah, there's, like, there, there's nothing to do. <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. I mean, like, see, people, you know, but there's a lot with the kids. I feel like I'm busier and on some level because of the kids, but it's just like, when was the last time I wasn't like doing something related to sports every day? So I might as well do this. Um, yeah, so, and I, I th go ahead, go ahead. I was just saying, since you're a, a certified draft expert this this draft season, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are like just some of the general general takeaways in terms of just guys that you watched and who you you know you like you know mm. watching and things like that? It doesn't matter position, anything. Well, I would, just because it's the last thing I did, I was thinking about the running backs, how I, I do think and that there's a, a time in the draft where these running backs have value. I think this is a pretty good running back class. And I get not taking, you know, a guy in the first unless you think he's really, really special. And, and DeAndre Swift might be that guy. But I think the value started hitting you like in the second round, like a second round running back if you need a running back uh, in the right system. You want them on your rookie contract. He's going to end up having more value, uh, especially a guy like J.K. Dobbins, who I really like. I like Cam Akers a lot. Like, to me, those guys are going to help your team more than a ton of the premium position picks that end up getting taken 
in front of you and they and they're like safe for evaluations it depends what kind of team you are but if you're a team that's like ready to go and that's going to add something to you like the bucks for instance who i think will be taking one uh early like these guys i think it's a good class it's a lot of guys that would have been first rounders 15 years ago you know what i mean like like jk yeah. dobbins w- would have been a first rounder 15 years ago he just would have jonathan taylor who i'm not as in love with he would have been a first rounder 15 years ago too he would have been a top 15 oh. 20 pick it's just a different league definitely yeah it's uh yeah, yeah i mean i love i love the running backs obviously the wide receivers are the uh are the showcase any wide receivers i mean you have any faves so far anybody that you know, that, that you can you can see just balled about on Sundays. Yeah, Denzel Mims was awesome. I uh, I gave him to the Saints with uh, we did a, like a mock draft thing on NFL yeah, Network, yeah, I and I just I just thought that would be fun. That would be like a fun pick. He's so athletic. I didn't really see what the problems were with him. I know he, he had some drops his senior year, but it wasn't it wasn't a crazy amount, and he was playing through a broken hand and. The athleticism, like his, when I saw that his three cone drill was like the best in, in the league, I thought, oh, maybe the Patriots might take him because that's that's all they take is three cone drill guys. And he, <laughs> to me, had like very little downside. His ball skills were like insane. I don't know. I sort of yeah. I fell in love with him, but I like a lot of the guys that could be available there. T. Higgins, uh, if the Saints ended up taking him, like I, I could totally get with that too. I, I think he'd be a great pick there. Um, I am I am the certified T Higgins truther, and I, I have been. So I I don't think he's going in the first. I think he's going to go a lot like in the second, or uh, you know, for whatever he, reason. Um, why? Just, yeah, he's not he's not like for whatever reason he has his detractors, but but I don't know. I think one thing I'm looking forward to. I hope people are right about this. Is that the conventional wisdom of where guys are going is going to be more wrong than usual and like it wouldn't like if you told me T Higgins was the fourth receiver off the board that certainly wouldn't there wouldn't be a shock but I, I don't think that would be so I have a I have a question in terms of kind of the NFC and the hierarchy um do you do you believe that the Packers are truly as good as they were last year no no I'd throw them sort of in you know after the Saints and the 49ers to me, I would throw almost everyone else into a bucket of like, you know, you, you might make the playoffs, you might not. Of course, you're going to have high expectations if you're if you're the Packers or if you're the Eagles or Seahawks. But like no one else really to me is our teams where I'd be stunned if they did not make the playoffs. And I would definitely include the Packers in that. There's a lot to like. And I, I think the defense could get better. It, it almost underperformed a little. It was very streaky. Um but there's something about the coaching staff and, and Rodgers hasn't quite been at his best that like it, they did not look like a 13 and three team. They, they felt more like a 10 and six type of team and, and maybe they'll get better, but, but it wouldn't surprise me if they don't. Uh, I mean, I, I know you've been pretty high on the Falcons in the, in the past. I, 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 for me as a, you know, as a Saints fans, we obviously hate them. Their rival, you know, they, no matter what their record is, when we play them, you know, it's, you know, we, we either lose or it's like a, it's a, you know, slobber fest. But, uh, like, have you figured out what was wrong with them last year? Like, was it a talent thing? Or, mm. like, I, I just can't put my finger on it with, like, what really went wrong? Because the talent wasn't that different from, like, the Super Bowl roster. No, I've I've been wrong about the Falcons a lot. I've been too high on the Falcons. I mean, um, I I guess I just bought I bought the Kool Aid like after they made it to the divisional round and barely lost to the Eagles the year after they won the Super Bowl. I was like, oh, this team it's young. It's going to be together for a long time, and uh, like it's getting better. I think it's just going to be one of those teams. And it's seven and nine the last two years, and it wasn't injuries last year. You're right. They're just they're just kind of soft on defense. Like Dan Quinn's defense has never really worked. They've had all the guys, they've put all the resources and they're just kind of soft. And they've had a couple little stretches where they weren't and, and they made the playoffs in those, but otherwise he's been there five years and they're, and they're pretty soft and they're supposed to be a defensive team and they don't look any better on paper right now. They, they look worse on paper defensively. Do you speak sticking with the same theme of the Falcons? So there's like this, this like I don't know if it's buzz or like mumbling that either a there's been a regression 
and Matt Ryan's game. And then two, and I don't buy this, but potentially. So you, so you're just bringing me on so I can flam the Falcons. I, I like, I, uh, I get it. So first of all, I don't, my number one team I hate the most, it isn't the Falcons. It's, it's, it's been 49ers, but that's, mm. that's neither here nor there. Um, that's because you went to that game in San Francisco. <laughs> that, that is exactly why, Greg. Hundred <laughs> percent. But that said, um, do you do you buy into that? And also, do you buy into potentially the Falcons looking to draft their quarterback? Um, I I buy that Matt Ryan played worse last year. He he's young enough. He's he's thirty four. That you know. The way quarterbacks are playing now, like, I don't think that necessarily means he's, like, going into some big decline. He could be better again this year. But he definitely uh, didn't make as good decisions, wasn't as accurate last year. I was disappointed. Um, they're, they like, as badly as, you know, are paying them for soft defense. Like, they weren't that far away from being a 9-7, and 10-6 and six type team. They had a lot of close losses. They weren't terrible. They've just been, you know, very average uh, with their share of bad luck the last two years in terms of injuries and losing close games. But either way, you thought they would be better than average, and, and that's that's all they've been you know, at, at best. And then could you see them addressing potentially, I don't know, a first round, but potentially taking a quarterback in the first round if, if that person's there and they feel like no. he's the guy? I don't think so. No, didn't they just pay Matt Ryan? Yeah, I mean, they, <laughs> they he's 34, and th- that used to be old, and, may, you know, who knows, maybe he will fall off a cliff, but it's like it's like five years younger than Phillip Rivers, who just got $25 million, you know what I mean? It's, it's eight years younger than Tom Brady, not that he's going to be, not that Matt Ryan's Tom Brady, but he, they're not worried about Matt Ryan. If Matt Ryan is, plays that bad, they know they're all going to lose their jobs anyway, you know, <laughs> he's their guy. <laughs> Uh, now with the uh, with the Panthers, the Carolina Panthers, like, obviously you can't predict anything with them. I mean, it's a completely new roster, front office, ownership, you name it. You got Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback, well known as Dan Hans just points out his six your know, his six air yards <laughs> per attempt. But now I gotta go and I gotta hear that on this show too. It's like every host no. that I go to is just no, making look, I like fun of Teddy. Show. No, I like Teddy. You know, Teddy's my guy, but Teddy went undefeated I, for you guys. You guys should, yeah, you guys should no. love Teddy. He, he, I mean, I mean he, we love him forever, you know. Who knows? Although maybe he, if he maybe if he was starting that playoff game, maybe they would have won, you know. All right, all right. Calm down. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I, I blocked a lot of people saying that, you know. So. <laughs> It would it would sort of be an honor to be blocked by you. I mean, I would I would miss the retweets and miss the jokes, but uh, I would feel like I've you know I, I've really achieved something to be blocked by you. No, no, I've, I've I've been mad at your takes before, but you still hadn't got the block. So. <laughs> I, but, uh, I don't yeah, know with what the, the Panthers, Panthers. Yeah, like what do you even expect from them? It's like I'm just I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah, I don't I don't know. They're they're probably. I'd have to think about it, but they might be the team I have the least like feel of anything of what they're going to do. Just because Matt Rule, you think is going to be a little different than than a lot of the head coaches out there. It's a little bit like Kingsbury, you know, a year ago. It, it, the yeah. difference being though is that there's not a lot of NFL coaches on that staff, even like assistant coaches on defense either. So yeah. it's just it's a total mystery. But they're not. You could say this about about 26 teams. You know, it's like they're not a – it's not a terrible roster. I don't – people are saying, like, oh, they should blow it up. It's like they have too many good players to blow it up. And if he's a decent coach, it's like they – it's not that hard to win seven or eight games, I, I feel like, if a couple things break your way. If, if they were better than that, then he, he'll show that he's going to be a hell of a coach and going to be a problem for you. Like, I, I think Teddy can win if, if the right things are, are kind of set up for him. I mean, Joe Brady – was literally a like a low level right. Saints offensive assistant, like a low level guy. I, I barely knew who he was, and he just—I mean—he rips apart, rips apart the college, you know, the college, uh, college football last year, and now he's a freaking OC. And it's like <laughs> I'm, I'm just—I mean, I'm just so interested to see what happens because I, I have no idea. Yeah, I didn't even think about kind of the Saints. Um angle there I mean obviously you know I know Joe Brady's from the Saints and it is crazy like catching up on these you know prospects because watching 
uh, Jefferson and, and Burrow and, and their running back, you know, in preparation for the draft, you, you know, you can't help but appreciate their offense. It was like they were running, you know, the Saints offense, a pro offense, and they were playing a bunch – a bunch of like you know college teams I mean that's what it looked like but you, yeah. you can't tell if it was like how much of it was talent because it was a very talented team um and how much of it is just Joe Brady about to come into the NFC South and uh be the guy that Sean Payton never saw coming you know what I mean just <laughs> yeah, yeah just crazy. end it and end end the the whole thing you know poor uh poor Lombardi uh Joe Lombardi the Saints Ooh. quarterback coach <laughs> Who was supposed to be like the next Sean Payton in in Detroit? Poor also, guy. poor poor uh, Pete Carmichael, who's just always just gonna be <laughs> just, just, just 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 in his place. So, um, you are unofficially the um, hashtag swirl tendencies when it comes to black quarterbacks. Um, mm. So, you you have this this love for them, Cam. Winston. I mean, not a, you know, it's not a blanket statement, but yeah, it's fair. Um, so don't don't forget Gino. Like, it's it's a yeah, long Gino's list. big. I jumped off. I jumped off EJ Manuel pretty quick. I'm trying to think of. <laughs> um. So that said, um, there's a like there's this, you know, mumbling potentially that. I don't know if I buy it with so much Cam, but potentially the Saints at some point, obviously after the draft, may bring in Jameis and potentially try to have another Teddy Bridgewater situation with him. Um, if that ever were to happen, would you think that a he would you know accept being a backup at least for a season and could? Wait, did you just say the Saints? Yeah. You were cutting out for a second. I didn't know. I have not heard anything about that. Yeah. There's just there's, there's some 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 whis- some whispers, um, in terms of, do you I guess long like do you think he's salvageable? Oh, for sure. I mean, he had his problems last year, but you can't be that bad and throw for five thousand yards. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like he 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 obviously has inherent problems that maybe maybe the best quarterback coach like Sean Payton can't can't fix. Um, but he's still better than a lot of starting quarterbacks out there. He still still does a lot of things at a really high level, including like, you know, some next level quarterbacking thing. That's that's the thing that probably drives coaches crazy about him. I, I think Ryan Ryan Fitzpatrick is a similar guy to me, who I think sees the game very well and calculates like risk on certain things just at a totally different level that people people and it's helped Ryan Fitzpatrick you know kind of max out his but you don't want you don't want your franchise guy to be like that I do think by the way Winston um Winston if he went to New Orleans I mean if he was going to sign it would be because you know he wants to learn from Drew Brees and he's cool state stepping back for a year and he sees the potential of, of possibly taking over it would it would actually be the best thing he could possibly do and it would shut up all the day Taysom Hill believers which which would be a fun kind of side effect <laughs> whoa Taysom Hill he where is this coming from well it's just like everyone all we ever hear uh, here's the next Steve Young and yet oh they're they're maybe gonna take a quarterback in the draft or maybe they're gonna sign Jameis Winston it's like uh if he was actually the next Steve Young you know but you you would let him play over Teddy Bridgewater yeah, the thing is, Sean Sean Payton loves Taysom, but like, as as Sean Payton about tight end Josh Hill, and you would think Josh Hill is like the best <laughs> tight end since you know, you know, since at you know Antonio Gates or whatever. I mean, that's just Sean Payton. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. The only thing I will say for Taysom is that he, whenever this pandemic is over, he earned me essentially like a drink and dinner on you. So. I'll always be appreciative of Taysom Hill. That's for that. true. That's true. I said he would not get a first round tender, and uh, you know you have you know your team better better than I do. That's for sure. Um, do you have any any other thoughts leading up to the draft tomorrow? Any thoughts overall on? Well, I mean, we didn't even really touch on on the AFC. Really, I guess we can go around to quote Dan Hansis. Uh, just quickly touch on the AFC and kind of how do you view? the AFC as a, as a whole? 
Well, the Chiefs, I mean, I'm not breaking any ground here that the Chiefs and the Ravens going into the year are, are the teams that, like I said, kind of are in that category of if they didn't make the playoffs, it, something went seriously wrong. And then there's like a million, there's a million other teams. There, there's the only teams, there's a few more bad teams, I think, in the AFC. To me, the bad teams are the, you know, the Jets, the Jaguars, and the Dolphins. And maybe the Bengals, but I actually think on paper the Bengals could be pretty pretty frisky, especially with with Burrow. Um, and if any of those teams make the playoffs, like something crazy kind of happened. Then after that, you know, I, I think I think people got a shot. It's it's weird to think of an AFC East where the Patriots are just not going to be the favorites. The Bills are going to be the favorites, which is wild. Uh, my last question, to Greg. I appreciate you for coming on. Uh, I don't know if you watched any of the uh, rookie quarterbacks, but I mean, are you Joe Burrow or Tua? Like, who, who, do, who kind of floats you? You know, makes tickles your fancy a little more. <laughs> uh, I guess Burrow, just because he's healthy. You know, it, like I, I'm not. It worries me when you're like talking about a, a, you know, the number one overall pick and he's 24 years old. I feel like that gets lost a little bit that he's playing against some guys that are like four years younger than him, five years younger than him. I mean, that, that is a massive difference, but when people are comparing him to Andy Dalton, it's like Andy Dalton is not making the plays on the move and out of structure. People are are doing that. Yeah. People are like, well, in a worst case scenario, he's kind of like a, you know, an Alex Smith, maybe an Andy (laughs) Dalton. And I sort of get the Alex Smith a little bit. If you, if you put it in a yourself in a 2006, you know, mindset, but man, this guy is so athletic and it, it like, it was just an uncanny season. You're just worried. Like, I don't know, uh, that the ceiling isn't quite as high as you would, you would like, but, but Tua, Tua doesn't seem far behind. What, so uh, Ryan kind of tweeted or tweeted about this. Like, do we even have a feel for like what Zach Taylor does on offense? Like even after a full end of, end of whole season. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. I mean, initially, they looked like they were just trying to do what the Rams were doing. And then, uh, you know, they, they mixed it up a little bit more. Andy Dalton actually looked okay for he, a couple games. He really, but, like, there's some games where I saw him and I was like, oh, like, he's he's fine. Like, he's, he's, he's at the Dalton scale. Like, he's fine. Yeah, you know, to their, in their defense, they were ravaged by injuries. And it's like, yeah, you're probably not going to win if you're the Bengals without Andy Dalton and A.J. Green. Like, you're probably going to look like a flaming, you know, pile of, I don't know, are we allowed to swear but uh, on this? But, uh, I mean, you know, what, what are you going to do in that scenario? What do you, you got? You're, you're the Louisiana guy, uh, Ryan. You know, what, what's, your, what's your feel on Burrow? Oh, I, look, I'm not even like an LSU fan. You know, I, I watch a little bit of them during, you know, like if they win, it's like, okay, cool. But it's not like I'm some LSU home. I really don't care if they win or lose. But uh, I just, when I studied him, I was just like, Every time I watch him, I just feel like he has the key traits that win in the NFL. Like, your arm yep. strength and all that stuff, yeah, that's okay, yeah. But, you know, managing the pocket, you know, uh, analyzing, looking, you know, standing behind and reading the field, the entire field, not just half of it, you know, going through progressions, you know, the uh, anticipation, putting the ball in front of the wide receiver so he can get the, you know, yards after catch you know, reading the safety, just all those little things that like every, like the quarterbacks that really do last in the league, he just showed it, you know what I'm saying? And yep. I mean, and Tua, and Tua did too, to a certain extent, but Tua, not that it's a knock on him, but he, he, he was just so safe in that system. He's so protected. Everything was just work. Everything worked around us in his system where Burrow, his offensive line wasn't really great. And he had to be creative in the pocket a lot and kind of create on the move. So I I just kind of itch towards him, but I really love Tua too. Like I think Tua, if he's like stays healthy, I think he's gonna be a stud too. I just he's like a Russell Wilson, Drew Brees kind of yeah, like, mix. It's just yeah. So I like both of them, but I just kind of I would sway towards the Burrow side a little bit. I, I just hope he succeeds with the uh, Bengals. I know everybody trashes the Bengals and. Mike Brown and all that, but I'd just love to see them, you know, get a great quarterback and, you know, ball out. Yeah, I, I used to love their team. Like, that was the first 
that was when I realized like I could like other teams other than the Patriots. I think it was just covering the league, but I love their mid uh, 2005 teams with Carson Palmer and oh, yeah. and I and I loved I loved them uh, the, kind of the second iteration of that too. Uh, like, you know the early early part of last decade, and even some of the Andy yeah. Dalton teams. You you want those fans to get something. I'm with you that to me they're very similar types of players uh seeing the whole field getting rid of the ball really quick to his release I, I think one of the reasons the it looks like the system is so good and the system is so good but it's because Tua had it mastered so early and I think that's oh. the things that that people talk about um that I've talked to and listened to and, and you can see it in the game too is that he he processes and sees you know, all four receivers and things so quickly. And he has such a quick release and everything is just very quick. And it's kind of a hard thing. I don't think I'm, I'm not good enough, like grinding film and knowing what the quarterback sees to really, to really be able to truly appreciate that. Cause you have to just kind of trust the the people that do know it, but that's where he gets the comparisons to breeze and that you're right. That is kind of what makes you successful in the NFL. The only thing is the injuries. I mean, three surgeries is, is no joke. I feel like the other two, two ankle surgeries kind of got lost in the shuffle because, because you're thinking about the hip, but that, that's a worry. That's a worrisome fact. Other than that, he seems about as safe to be like a solid above average starting quarterback at worst as just about as about anyone I mean Burrow seems to me like a higher upside and and maybe a little higher risk just because he was like older and was one yeah. year and, and you just haven't seen it as much as you saw it with two it um so uh, we, we we asked you all the hard-hitting football questions I'm gonna the last one I have for you is how's the beard coming along Greg quarantine beard we're we out here yeah, it's happening. I mean, we all we all decided to do it on around the NFL. How you look? I don't know. Like I'm kind of, I don't know. Now I'm already sick of it. I was ha- I was enjoying not having a beard, but we we agreed to do it like as a foursome. So it's happening right now. Uh, we got to talk about Mark. He's looking like Ted Krasinski a little bit. We gotta. I don't, I don't know how. <laughs> how we all have to I feel I feel like that fits the brand though. You know. That's, <laughs> That's sort of that's perfect. Um, oh my god, Mark's my god. Mark, Mark's hilarious. Um, but we thank you for coming on. Um, you, you are like you you don't you're not a part of hashtag Saints Twitter, but I feel like you're a member by proxy of you know you're you know you're kind of close enough to it, so you're an unofficial member of hashtag Saints Twitter. Um, you can follow Greg on Twitter at Greg Rosenthal. Let's all his work read his article when's the, what's the last article that you that you that you did that was worth something oh damn <laughs> damn i mean i know i was rambling on a little bit but shit i mean you can't you can't put people on and just come at them like that um i am writing every night of the draft i had a, some good oh. gm rankings i gave your boy mickey the last thing i wrote was good actually it was uh some gm rankings those, yeah. those take a long time and i gave your boy i finally decided to just give mickey loomis some love for, for all the, the financial jujitsu he's done <laughs> over the years and it's given peyton and ireland some love too because if, if i'm gonna say they got the best roster in the league and they are the best team in the NFL on balance over the last three years, which is weird, weird to think because they haven't been in a, a, a Super Bowl, but they have been the best uh, over the last three years, like combined, like if you took them all, adding them up, um, you got to give Loomis, you got to give Loomis some love. And, and the Pelicans are still in New Orleans. What, what is that? <laughs> that Jeff Ireland text that he sent Loomis. During the like, senior, during the senior <laughs> bowl, it's like the best text in history. Like, <laughs> um, so I know you're gonna be crazy busy tomorrow. Um, so obviously, listen, listen to the recap of you know the Rana NFL podcast, recapping the draft. Um, what's your guys' schedule coming for the next couple of days? Mm. I'm I'm liking it. I mean, we I'm watching a draft at home for the first time. Oh, it's the best. Know, in a long time. It's the best. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think when the last time would have been, um, but it would have been long, a long time ago, maybe about 2006 or so. So uh, <laughs> the I'm going to have graduated high school. Because <laughs> <laughs> I used to go in New York. I think I actually, I think I went to the, to the draft that year. I think it was probably 2005, but uh, 
I'm going to have my kids watch it, and I'm going to be writing the column at the end, and then we, we got the podcast uh, every night right afterwards. My kids are into it. They love football. Are you guys going to continue doing a daily podcast? Because, I mean, you're spoiling us, man. Like, I listen to it every morning when I start Ooh. work. I play Dang, it, you know. Really? Yeah, it's like, I'm, I, after the draft, it's like, there's nothing, man. Like, <laughs> Tumbleweeds. Don't anything to talk about. Tumbleweeds. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I have been wondering, like, I wouldn't expect anyone to even be listening all the time because I have less time to listen to podcasts now. I think that's true for a lot of people because they're not in their cars as much or on trains. But I think we're we're half doing it. One because it's fun, but just you know to have something to do and it's it is fun to do. I don't know if we're gonna do daily after the draft, but we have not uh, we have not crossed that that the bridge just yet we we thought hey let's do it at least until the draft now that it looks like we might have a couple you know more months of this it's like okay we gotta figure this out <laughs> well thank you so much again for coming on greg uh we'll you know we'll be in touch and so again you can follow greg on twitter at greg rosenthal ryan thank you for joining me as always man having fun getting right here just chopping it up a bit talking about football talking about the saints you can follow on Ryan on Twitter at that boy Wolf. Don't follow me on Twitter because I'll probably block you. Um, and with that, we're out. <laughs>